does the hospital administrator hold any liability, or does the no because agent? of because the woman because the woman said to you, "Are you threatening me? Are you trying to tell me that if I don't do this, you won't let me take my property out that door?" That's all she had to say. That's right. And she she said, "You do know what you just did was extortion. That if you don't, if I don't do something because you tell me to do or you order me to do it, are you telling me?" That you're not, you're going to hurt me? You're going to cause me harm? Is that what you're saying? Or if, if you want me to sign that piece of paper, ma'am, I'll be glad to sign that piece of paper. But you know what? You're going to have to come up with a billion dollars up front first, and then I'll sign it. You want, you want to order me? Order me. But I demand fair and just compensation to carry out your orders. You want me to perform a function? Fine. You're getting paid to be here and talk to me? Fine. I want to get paid to answer you. I don't know. I think it's an uphill battle, really, honestly, because, I mean, there's no way to really, unless, like I said, not unless this, this private administrative process um, is basically the way to go, where I just write her a letter and say, you know, you know, do, do, you, do you dispute, you know, that, or... He or, just told you what to say. I mean, that's, that's what you would have said. That's what she would have said in the instance that the, that the agent approached her. Okay, now she, all she has to do is go to who's ever holding a child and say, I wish for my property to be restored. I, immediate, I, I, I wish for the immediate restoration of my property. That's it. That's it. Uh, who's got it, Grandma? Yeah, Grandma, Grandma's got it now. And as a matter of fact, uh, Grandma, see, he, he had to hire uh, the male friend of this scenario here of mine, Basically, he had to hire a private investigator just to find out where the baby was being located because at the time when um, CPS approached her at the hospital the day the baby was supposed to leave, um, I guess pursuant or respective to the contract that they signed, the baby was supposed to be going to the grandma's address. But in fact, the grandma had not went from the hospital to there for whatever reason. She went to her boyfriend's house and kept the baby there at another location that was not on record. So the public or so the private investigator uh comes back with this report, like two pages, and says that he interviewed uh he sat at the lady's house, you know, trying to locate her for a couple of days and, and was unsuccessful. So he interviewed a couple of the neighbors and the neighbors said that she hadn't been home for several weeks and that um you know that you know they they would be um <clears throat> That necessarily, she hadn't been home in a few weeks or whatnot, and they didn't know where she was. Well, the okay, um, okay, okay. Before you start, you're going too deep into this. Yes, that's right. Very simple. What state did it happen in? Texas, of course. Okay, no, not of course. Mine was Alabama. It happens <laughs> everywhere. It's no big deal. What I'm saying is, who is liable if the baby drowns or? The legs get broken. Is the state of Texas liable? Is the county liable? Or is grandma liable? Is yeah, grandma, it's like grandma, I mean, apparently. Is grandma, is grandma considered a foster care provider? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. He's not. And he's telling you to ask those questions. Right. I see. I see. To I'm, ask asking you, I'm asking you, right. If you the baby the I'm baby sorry. accident the baby actually accidentally drowns or or gets strangled by his own diaper or whatever okay who is the mother going to sue for the damage to her property who is she going to sue grandma or is grandma considered a foster care provider or is DFAC or CPS or DHR or DSS are they still have the capacity to place the child that'll put is the fear of god into them yeah, is it, hey, Angela. Is it Huh? I'm sorry, I, I really heard what she said. I just said that that would put the fear of God into them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you going to be liable? Are you taking full reli um, liability for this, you know, child then? Yeah, well, well, that'll, well that'll, that'll put the fear of Lentz in them. <laughs> no, well, I tell you what, you no know, matter what, what I think they, they, they find, find a new lawyer to the case. I oh, forget about lawyers, man. It, it, you know, it ain't common sense unless it's Lent sense. <laughs> All right, thank you, man. I appreciate the information, and I really don't I'm know. Fine, what... Just go, just go find out, man. Who is bears liability if the child gets injured, harmed? And, and who is bearing the liability? This is her property, and if and if your girl, or this girl, or the mm -hmm. woman, whoever who bared this child, 
doesn't have the understanding of what the word property is, she will never get her property, the restoration, it'll never occur. If she keeps saying child or baby or infant or kid or offspring or, 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 or prodigy, if she uses any other word other than property, the government's going to not recognize it as hers. Okay. So she has to define it exclusively as it's her property. It's exclusive to her. Nobody else with the society can make a claim for it. And all she has to do is wish for its immediate return. That's all she has to do. Nothing else. So she, she says, writes that directly to the um, to the grandma because I yeah. mean there's there's other players. Right, and grandma's going to grandma's going to tell her to go f off, right? I believe so. Good. Then now you just take that f off and you you take it to your your local mom and pop little district small what you guys would call a small claims court. To me, if it's a penny, it's and worth making a claim for. I'm going to make a claim, and you guys want to call small claims, call it anything you want. It's just a claims court. Just go down to your local court. And just file a claim that she has my property and I require its immediate restoration. And that's it. And the court clerk will say, oh, okay, fine. And she'll stamp it. And like I said, that when I did with the folks in uh, Canada, I said, see exhibit oh. A. I'm going to put the child's name down. I said, see exhibit A. And I attached a photo of the baby uh, yeah. to the, uh, well, four kids who see exhibit A, B, C, and D. So the court clerk can't give you any boo. They just say, uh, see exhibit A. So after the court clerk stamps it in and files it, it says, okay. We'll have them, the grandma summons, where's Exhibit A? It's like, ah, oh, I forgot Exhibit A. You know what? I'll bring it down tomorrow, and I'll make sure the other side gets a copy of it. Because then when she sees Exhibit A as a baby, then the court clerk's going to be like, oh, I thought you meant a yo-yo, a pogo stick, or a bowling yeah. ball. And they named I didn't, it meant, <laughs> I didn't know you meant baby. It was like, don't worry about it. it it's, it's my property. Don't worry about it. And I make the immediate claim that I want the restoration to occur immediately and let grandma come forth and try to prove that that's her property. Yeah, very good. And they say, well, you got to take this to family court. It's like, mm, no, where does it say I have to take a claim for property to be in family court? Okay, well, here's, child. here's the thing, that's Carl. Child. No, they'll, they'll that's a child. It's like you might define it as a child. I define it as property. Now, who's making a claim, court clerk lady? Are you making a claim or am I making a claim? Let well, the court of course, decide. you know, Grandma's petition actually, you know, morphed into a, 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 you know, a case number, a cause number like family court. And so whenever the that's the uh, grandma's, that's grandma's that's grandma's case exactly that's not the exactly case. because I heard from a call once before from you I mean if they make a claim then you make a claim you bring your own claim but here's that's the thing right. you know when he goes into court and then or when he went to the county recorder uh, the clerk's office he basically went down there to go and ask them you know well, how much does it cost to make a claim and they were like. I think they know and recognize this guy because he's been back and forth down there. About him. And uh, I'm, I don't know. I hear some feedback. But um, yeah, a lot basically, of feedback. basically uh, they recognized him. And when he went to ask how much would it cost for him to file his claim, they were trying to, you know, divert the man to file all of his paperwork into their claim, into Grandma's claim. Okay. And the the only way, Grandma's sir, claim was sir, only sir, a sir. petition. Sir, 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 hang on, hang on. If anybody's having a hard time with the court clerks, the simplest thing to do is put a lousy stamp on it and mail the damn thing with a check and be done. Be done with it, huh? Be done. No discussion at the counter, no nothing. They have to accept it. They stamp it. They file it. It's done. And that's even in the case of a new case. Like, that's, like that's, that's simple, right. I can't, so I couldn't drive down to Alabama. I filed a case. I just put a stamp on it, put the money order in it, and done. Okay. If I stood at the window, you don't think they would have gave me a hard time to try to file my case? Because the the, the the individual in charge of Alabama's Department of Social Services was the chief federal district court judge in the federal district court in which I was filing my claim. You don't think the court clerks would have been trying to defend the chief judge of that district federal court exactly. by not accepting my claim? Of course they're told not to take any of my paperwork. So you just put a lousy stamp on and mail it. 